Eos, number 98, will kick for the Gators. This is a South Carolina team that has played very well on the road. And the kick by Eos. Boyd at the goal line. No fumble here. Back to the 15. Knocked down at the 17. Dorian Monroe made the tackle. And Blake Mitchell gets the start. He came on brilliantly in the second half of the loss last Saturday night to the Arkansas Razorbacks. You see his stats for the day. And you talk to coaches like Reggie Herring. He said, I've never seen the defensive coordinator for Arkansas throwing like that. We had guys covered, and he just put balls in spots we could not stop. Mitchell started the season as a starter, then was benched after some ineffective performances. And the quick flip out to the left to Sidney Rice. Tony Joyner, number 19, makes the tackle. And let's check the South Carolina offensive lineup presented by Applebee's up front. Meredith Coleman, White Edwards, and Sorensen, third straight game. They've started as a unit. Rice and McKinley, the wideouts. Mike Davis gets the start of tailback. Andy Boyd is the tight end. Second and ten, Steve Spurrier, second year as the head coach at South Carolina. Flags are down. At the snap. That was Mike Davis with the carry, and uh, Jarvis Moss made the tackle. How about that first play of the game by Tony Joyner on that quick pass? He ran right through a blocker right in there and stopped Rice. That looks to me like a team and a defense that's really focused. There was no flag. There was seven men on the line of scrimmage. Therefore, no illegal formation. That is Steve Shaw, the referee today, defensively for the Gators. And this front seven particularly has been outstanding. Harvey McDonald, Joe Cohen, and Jarvis Moss. Brandon Seiler, despite a bad knee, injured Wednesday, gets the start. And Reggie Nelson is earning All-American accolades as the free safety. Yeah, I think he's the most valuable player in the Southeastern Conference. Urban Meyer, second year as head coach, came here after two years at Bowling Green, two years at Utah. Third and short, they hand it off to Davis. He goes left and picks up the initial first down for South Carolina. And uh, let's get more on Brandon Seiler's unexpected position as a starter. Here's Tracy Wilson. Well, Brandon Seiler suffered a partial tear of his MCL of that left knee. He was in a brace and on crutches since Wednesday. And Urban Meyer told us yesterday he was extremely doubtful. But one hour before game time, Seiler all taped up and with a custom-made brace on was out here running, stretching, and testing out that knee. Afterwards, he said he felt good, no pain. And as you can see, he's going to try and give it a go. And Tracy, he's the charismatic leader of this defense too. First down and 10. Corey Boyd is in. Quick flip. Mitchell tipped. Incomplete. Jarvis Moss, number 94. Well, if you're going to beat Florida's defense, you must control the front four. They are, I think, the most dominating front four maybe in college football. These guys right there, they're athletic. They read plays extremely quick. They're tall and they're tough to throw around. When you throw the ball short against Florida's front four, you have to throw it into lanes because they'll get their hands up. And one of their numbers is missing. Marcus Thomas kicked off the team before last week's Vanderbilt game. Third time he's had uh, discipline problems on the ball club. Here's the catch by Rice leaning back and picks up a first down. Out to the 47-yard line. Marcus Thomas suspended for the season opener because of a failed drug test last summer. Played one, then was suspended for two more. And uh, Marcus Thomas dismissed on Friday of last week. And, and don't underestimate his importance to this Florida defense. They were strong up the middle. Florida was with Thomas, Siler, and Nelson. Now, Siler's nicked. Thomas isn't there. Will Steve attack the middle of this defense? They picked up their second first down. They'll go from the spread. Four-man rush by the Gators. Deep right side. Oh, my goodness. Mo Brown, number nine, had a step. Had more than a step. When you look at a Steve Spurrier receiver, you see a guy that is disciplined. He runs his routes, and he gets into the proper spot. 
That time, that was a system call right there. He got Mo Brown all open because the Florida, excuse, the Florida defense was predictably not there. That was a system call. Second and ten after the incompletion. Now the Gators have uh, an eight-man front. Yeah, this is a new look. Joiner and Siler right in the middle, right there. Mitchell steps up, has to tuck it and run. Good pressure. And Jarvis Moss is off to a very quick start in this ball game. Third and nine. Davis is the lone setback, four wide, two on either side. Two-man rush. And Mitchell goes deep. This one's ineffective. Might have been tipped. Well, Greg Madison, the co-defensive coordinator, there, he said yesterday we're going to play a lot of two-man and three-man line. Well, they did a three-man line that time, but Ray McDonald, number 95, comes right around the corner and makes the play. Ray's right here, I believe. Comes right up and Brett tips the ball before it's thrown. Three-man line, actually only rushing two players. Two players. They drop the nose tackle out. Two-man rush. That's not good for the confidence of a passing attack. On fourth down, Ryan Suckup, number 14, averaging 44 yards. Tries to position kick this one. Oh, boy. Brandon James, the freshman from St. Augustine, kind of delayed his decision, and uh, Captain Munnerlin is down to make the tackle. 42-yard punt, nothing on the return. Gators have the ball. 1966 homecoming. Quarterback Steve Spurrier cements his legacy as a Gator, single-handedly helping defeat Auburn on his way to winning the Heisman Trophy. The ball is closed. And is on target. Steve has done it again. That was a 40-yard field goal. Norm uh, Carlson telling us before the game that it was the third field goal Spurrier tried that year, and he actually had a zippered kicking shoe so he could get it on his right foot right away. And he told Ray Graves, I can make I this. I can make it. Wes Barfield was their short-range kicker back then. They do. He couldn't kick it 40 yards. First down and 10. Chris Leak is in at quarterback. Hands it off to Deshaun Wynn. Or Percy Harvin, beg your pardon. So the freshman, who's been hampered all season long by a high ankle sprain, gets the start at tailback. Let's, uh, Leak, of course, is a starter for his fourth year. And they're really struggling the last two games, Gary. Yeah, six interceptions the last couple games, and a couple of those throws were not on target and not bad reads on top of it. Drop wine, Wilson. You saw Wilson starting at left guard, second down and 12. There's the remainder of the starting offensive lineup. Offensive middle has been hampered by injuries, and they're a young one. Anyway, here's Leak in the end zone. Steps up, fires it out. It's caught. Dallas Baker at the 21, first down for him. Leak dangerously close to getting caught for the safety. When we talked to Chris yesterday, we asked him, what's the best you felt? And he says, my best rhythm all year was the second half against Tennessee on the road. But if he can make plays like this from the pocket, that's all you got to do. You don't have to run it any more than that and keep your head up like he did to make a first down play. That's a big play by a quarterback who's trying to find his rhythm. That was Emmanuel Cook, number 21, the strong safety, who flew by Leak. First down to 10 on the 13-yard game. Well, they're challenging Florida. It's man-to-man -man all over the field. Leak out of the spread. Blitz coming. Goes right side. Caught by Cornelius at the 32-yard line. And let's check this uh, South Carolina defense up front. Brinkley, Pepper, Reeves, and Lindsey. Casper Brinkley's twin brother, Jasper Brinkley, is the middle linebacker for this team. And in the secondary, it's Bennett, the best of the bunch, Woodson, Cook, and Captain Munnerlin. And Lewis Murphy, number 82, comes on the field. He's wide to the left. Riley Cooper, true freshman, is also on the field, number 86. That's Billy Latsko in motion. Hand off at the middle. Deshaun Wynn. Bothered by a bum knee much of the year, but another big game. Boy, Leak's play kind of ignited these guys. Sure has a couple plays, but you know, we were talking for this game. The guy I think should be the center of this offense is number 21 right there, Deshaun Wynn. 
He is the guy that makes those eight and 10 yard runs. You don't need 80 yard runs, 50 yard runs from the tailback spot because you got playmakers all over the field at wide receiver. They just need those positive runs at tailback. And I think Wynn is the guy to go. Last week's starting quarterback is on the field defensively, Savelle Newton, number 13. We expect to see him on offense today too. Leak off his back foot for Baker. Flag is down. The flag falls at the 40-yard line. Yeah, I think Fred Bennett's going to get called for holding or pass interference. Baker is a playmaker. And when you go one-on-one -on -one against him, even though you got your best corner guy over there, you have to take advantage of that one-on-one -on -one from Baker. Holding, number eight on the defense. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Another first down. What to make of Savelle Newton? He, uh, he said he practiced in defense earlier this week. He told the press in Columbia he didn't expect to play. You know what I make the most out of it is I think Steve wants to get playmakers on defense. He wants to get guys who know when the ball's in the air, he has confidence he will go up and make a turnover. And it also tells me I don't think we'll see much of number 13 at quarterback. He must have practiced on defense. And he is on the field. First down and 10. Let's go again in motion. Leap for the option. Breaks the first tackle, and Emmanuel Cook is up to stop him. Tim Tebow, who's not been used all that much the last couple of weeks. Tebow on second down and six. Here's Tebow, and this time nothing doing. Third down. Well, we were there against Georgia, and Georgia was ready for Tebow. He got two series in the second half. First and second down did not come close to third down and Leak had to trot back on. It looks like Chris Leak will now trot back on on third down. Now we talked to Chris Leak about this substitution pattern yesterday. Seems rather complacent about it. Well, sure didn't want to talk about it much, did he? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's my point. I don't want to talk. I wouldn't either if I was him. Third down, Leak back on the field at third and five. It's Cornelius who starts in motion, now sets up the block, stunts defensively, leak. Oh, he's got a man wide open. This is Andre Bubba Caldwell, first down Florida at the 22-yard line. Well, Bubba Caldwell was in the slot that time, just went out on an easy little out route, five-yard route that time, nobody covers him. This has to be a busted assignment because everybody else is playing man coverage for South Carolina and nobody covers a guy Vern, he's caught eight passes the last two games, eight and eight, and nobody covers Bubba Caldwell. Leak is three of three for 43 yards. Caldwell, 40 receptions. And a first down 10 after that 19-yard game. Deshaun Wynn starts right, gets a block, and Carlton Miller skips down the sidelines. It's another Florida first down, this time first and goal. If Florida wants to be an SEC champion, they're going to play for it, and a runner into this national championship, number 21 must come through for this team. All this stuff with wide receivers and true freshmen, give the ball to 21, get those six, eight-yard games, and watch that play action and passing game come back from there. I think, I just don't understand why he doesn't get the ball more. Well, they actually uh, rule that he stepped out of bounds just outside the 10. So it is not a first and goal. It's first and 10 from what will officially be called the 11-yard line. There's Wynn and Leak. Oh, my. Jasper Brinkley, the middle linebacker, number 52, not fooled at all. This was going to be a shovel pass inside, but number 94, Jean-Pierre, defensive tackle. You're going to see the shovel pass come inside to win, but number 94 is going to be standing right there. Look at that. There he is. You can't get it to that guy, and actually Leak does a good job of holding on to that ball. That could have been a big interception and turnover right there. Good job by the quarterback. Again, another one of those kind of trick plays for Florida instead of going right up. It's man-to-man. -man. You don't need to trick him. Inside the red zone, they've got Wynn wide right now. And Leak gets Cornelius as a blocker. Leak off his back foot, left side in the corner. Diving try, incomplete. Percy Harvin leaning out, couldn't quite 
Catch it inbounds. See what I'm talking about? This was obvious from the snap. Chris Leak read this. He had man-to-man -man coverage. Inside, Percy Harvin matched up against a safety, Woodson. He knew he had him, threw it to the outside, and Harvin almost came up with it. Hey, you got to make good throws against man-to-man. -man. But there's no reason to trick it. They're telling you we're playing man coverage. Harvin injured his ankle first play of the second quarter at Tennessee back in September and has been handicapped by that ever since. Late substitution for South Carolina. Third down and a flag, free snap flag. And somebody didn't hear the whistle, and they nail Chris Lee. That's Lemuel Jean-Pierre. For about the fourth time in this game, South Carolina had confusion bringing people on and off the field. And that time, a flag went out. I don't know if they got called or not. Well, the crowd is responding to the absence of a flag, at least for the moment, thrown when Jean-Pierre took leap to the ground. Before the snap, illegal substitution number five on the defense. That'll be a five-yard penalty. It's still third down. If you, come inside, yeah, if you come inside the numbers, here's, there's a guy here that's trying to get off. There's a guy there that's trying to get off. Once you go out past the numbers and then go off the field like that, he comes off the sideline. That's going to get called. See if you can hear the whistle. Well, I heard it. Yeah, everybody on the field had stopped except number 94. Right, and you could also tell from the body language that Chris Leak had given up on the play. That was unnecessary. Could have been called. Now third and 12 at the 13. Three-man rush. Leak in the corner for Baker. Tipped and incomplete. Fred Bennett got a hand back there. Chris Leak in the pocket, thought it was man-to-man -man coverage, but it was a little bit of a change-up this time by Tyrone Nix. You're going to see it's a robber. This safety's going to go back. This safety's going to go to the middle, and everybody's going to play outside technique. Watch this. Kind of a cool defense. Two deep. Now it's one deep. Everybody's playing technique to the outside, and if you try to throw that ball to the outside, it's easy to have good coverage. Should have been intercepted. Hetland has hit only two this year, and he cuts this one dangerously close to the left. Chris Hetland is now two for nine man. for the year. Oh, man. See him say what happened, and Hetland doesn't want to talk about it. What happened? What happened? Same thing that happened all year, Coach. He's now missed from 52, 47, 36, 36, 39, and 42. This one from 29. We're still scoreless, surprisingly. Long, nightmare season continues for Chris Hetland. 13 of 16 a year ago, 2 for 9 after the miss from 29 just a moment ago. And so South Carolina has the ball for the second time, still scoreless first quarter. Blake Mitchell under his center, Chris White. Straight up the middle, it's Mike Davis. He runs into Joe Cohen, number 20. Bowl season almost here, and CBS Sportsline is your destination for complete coverage. Check out the latest bowl predictions and discuss with other fans on the newly launched state-of-the-art message boards only at cbssportsline.com. You're tempted, if you're South Carolina, to run the ball between the tackles. Hard to run the ball between the tackles even with the backups in there, isn't it? They don't give mm. up yards. Second and eight. Drilled by Mitchell out to the 30-yard line, and the catch is made by Kenny McKinley, number 11. That'll be close for a first down. All right, Mike Davis with a handoff. On third and short, he gets out to the 35. Ray McDonald, number 95, makes the tackle. Number 94, Jarvis Moss makes the tackle for the Gators. South Carolina, as we mentioned, comes in five and four. And their most difficult games have been in Columbia. They get very well on the road. Yeah, you know, 3 0 on the road, but, but this isn't Mississippi State, Vandy, and Kentucky. That's it? a very good point. 
That's quite quite astute of you. <laughs> First down and ten. Losses at home to Tennessee, Arkansas, Georgia, and Auburn. Auburn shocked today by Georgia. Oh, nice. Sidney Rice with the catch out to the 46-yard line. That'll move the chain again for the Gamecocks. Look at Brandon Siler in this football game. When he's healthy, he's all over the football field. We're going to watch him a little bit for you to see how good he's moving. I don't think he's moving very well. That does not look like the Brandon Siler I've watched when he is flying all over the football field. I'm a little surprised yeah, to see him. I, I am too, to be truthful. I, I, I thought they'd kind of figure out a nickel package or something like that. First and ten. Draw play. Davis comes right, spins, driven down as he gets to the 48-yard line. Number 25. Mike Davis uh, starting in place of Corey Boyd for the second week in a row. Boyd is the leading rusher for the team. Mike Davis last week with seven carries for 28 yards in the loss for Tennessee, two for six. When you're hurt a bit, it's hard to get off blocks. And, and if you watch Brandon Seiler, he used to be able to just eliminate blocks. Watch this. Cannot get off the block right there. That's when you look at a guy. He's in the right spot, but just can't do that last move to make a play. Second and seven. Mitchell hit as he lets it go right side. It's caught by... Mavlovich, Robert Mavlovich, only his third catch of the season. They don't employ their tight ends much in the uh, pass receiving area. No, and, and South Carolina fans will understand that. Uh, Jared Cook's big drop put in for a touchdown that could have maybe won a football game. But, uh, you know, when you watch Florida's defense, you have to wonder, that when you look at, I'm sure Charlie Strong right now and Greg Madison, the coordinators for Florida, are saying, how long do we go with Siler? I know he wants to play. I know he's emotional, but does he start to hurt your overall package? The backup is a freshman, Brandon Spikes. McKinley starts in motion. They hand it to Boyd, comes right. First carry in a couple of weeks. He uh, missed two days of practice prior to the Arkansas game. Did not carry the ball in that one. Yeah, I'll tell you, number 30 doesn't hurt you being in there. Earl Everett is a monster. We always talk about Siler, but watch Earl Everett. He's had game after game. We saw him in a Tennessee game where he was outstanding. He just makes plays. Well, five and four on the road. Fourth and one. They'll think about it. South Carolina calls timeout with 3.07 remaining. And Steve Spurrier's return. Hasn't changed much, has he? Three oh seven to go, first quarter, fourth and one. Having called the timeout, looks like uh, South Carolina is either going to try and draw them offside or go for it here. Wouldn't be a bad time for it. Same five offensive linemen starting today for the third straight game. That's the first time in 22 games for Steve Spurrier's bunch. Fourth and one, they'll go for it, apparently. Toss to Boyd, going left. It's close, a flag is down. And a player is injured. Looks like it might be Earl Everett who made contact with Boyd. Yeah, where that came from, that's usually holding off the inside on the end of the line by a tight end type player. Personal foul, face mask, number 13 on the defense. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. Here right. it is. Happened right on the inside of the line. Well, that's, that's an important injury considering Siler right there. Number 13 is Crum. Watch him grab the face mask as he's going to get knocked down. Tries to hold on right there. Right in front of an official and you're going to get called. I, I think they would have made it anyway. That's it. By the way, South Carolina is the fewest punts in the Southeastern Conference. Only 25 for all season. Right. Third in the country. Hawaii hasn't punted, uh, <laughs> has only punted 15 times. First down and 10 at the 28-yard line. Four wideouts. Four-man rush. They flip it out to Sidney Rice. One-on-one -on -one goes right by the corner. Ryan Smith, number 26. A gain of 14. 
You know, when you can throw the ball well, what happens is it forced you to move your safeties back a bit. And what that does is take Reggie Nelson, usually plays in the middle where he can have an effect on both sides of the field, and now he's on one side of the field. He's gonna rotate back, but watch this. You're gonna force him to do things he's not used to doing. That creates momentum going the other way for Reggie and doesn't get in there and hit it with the same force that he usually does. Blake Mitchell has continued his excellent play, six of nine in the first quarter. As time comes right caught by Freddie Brown, number 82, the third wide receiver. So Mitchell now seven of 10. Well, a year ago, these two teams played in Columbia and South Carolina as Spurrier's first game against the team he coached for 12 seasons. They won it 30 to 22, and it wound up costing Florida yep. a spot in the SEC championship game. How about that? Last year, they only threw the ball 17 times in that game. They've already thrown it 10 in the first quarter. Second down inside the 10. Four-man rush by the Gators again. The catch is made by Corey Boyd. He's going to be topped at the six. Well, that was a 30 to 22 victory. And we should note that South Carolina has never won in Gainesville. And uh, that guy delivered most of the whippings right. to the Gamecocks uh, by an average score of 41 to 16 games played. Here. I think there's an old saying around here. I think Lawrence Wright, the all time player here in Florida, said you're either Gator or you're Gator bait. <laughs> They're going to try to make Steve Spurrier both today. So far, they haven't been able to do it. 12th play of the drive, Gary. Rice wide left, third and two. McKinley in motion. They slip it inside. That's going to be close. See where the spot looks like he's going to be a right foot spot. I'm guessing they got enough. It is a first down. Measurement not even called for. So first and goal from the four yard line. Yeah, if you can throw the ball effectively, it looks like you can run the ball just enough. This Florida defense has one thing they don't believe in. They don't believe their corners can match up man to man. So you're getting to see a lot of easy pitch passes from the South Carolina offense. First and goal, two men wide left. Freddie Brown is wide right. They hand it off. Mike Davis surges toward the goal line. Touchdown, Gamecocks. Number 30, Earl Everett, is not in the football game. I said it was a big part of the game. Number 32 is true freshman replacement. Dustin Doe is in there. Dustin Doe fanned on the tackle. And in his return to the swamp, Steve Spurrier's team has taken a 6-0 lead. Ryan Suckup, the sophomore from Hickory, North Carolina, who does place kicking and putting chores for the Gamecocks, hammers this one home. A 13-play drive that covered 80 yards and consumed six minutes and 10 seconds on the clock. Davis from four yards out. South Carolina and the ball coach have a 7-0 lead. Back in Hartford where it's time for the playbook presented by the Hartford. Gary? Look, this stuff doesn't happen by accident. A true freshman is in the game, Dustin Doe. What do you do? You run the ball right at Dustin Doe. There he is, right there, number 32. Go right at him and take your chances. That would have been Earl Everett. Right in the hole, you can't miss that tackle. Four Gators get a piece of Davis, and he gets seven points out of it. Earl Everett not in the football game. Dustin Doe, his replacement. Good play calling. That's the play behind the play. Mitchell Brilliant had that uh, terrific second half. Reggie Herring, the Arkansas defensive coordinator, said it was one of the great passing performances he'd ever witnessed. And Mitchell, in this first quarter, 8 of 11 for 61 yards. And he is thrown to five different receivers. Brandon James bobbles it. Oh, wow. Picks it up a yard in and gets it out only to the nine. See, that was just a mental mistake by a young player. The ball took him into the end zone. He did not have to bring it out. He could have stayed there and got the ball at the 20. Kickoff, watch. Mishandles it. 
panics a bit right here. Now he panics. Key stay in, stay in. Oh, no, now he's got to run right through his own guy more, and then he doesn't have any momentum to get up the field. Special teams that was such a worry for South Carolina <laughs> makes a play. Second time that Florida has begun a drive inside its own 10-yard line. Recall the big play was made by Chris Leak, a 13-yard gain, but ultimately Chris Hetland missed a 29-yard field goal. So Urban Meyer and the Florida Gators trail by seven as we get set for the second quarter in the Swarm. In 1990, Steve Spurrier's first season as the Gators' head ball coach. Playing at home, Florida handed fourth-ranked Auburn their worst loss in the series since 1912. Forty-eight to seven was the final in that one, and we are nearby the murky waters of Lake Alice, where. A sign sits and says, do not feed the alligators. Don't get close to them. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, first down and 10. Chris Leak hands it off to Percy Harden, the freshman. Can't quite shake loose. He does pick up six yards. Well, the absence of Earl Everett uh, significant in that last touchdown run. Let's check in with Tracy Wolfson. Vern, Florida trainers were looking at Everett's right shoulder. They were testing his range of motion. He told them, though, he was okay. Expect to see him back in on the next series. All right. Six tackles already today. Yeah, he popped it right on the shoulder pad. You can see that on Boyd. Right shoulder right there, and he felt a stinger. That's a medical term. Stinger. <laughs> okay. I've heard it used <laughs> late really, at I night. <laughs> Uh, having some reference to adult beverages. Second down and four. Play fake. Leak. Deep left side. Andre Caldwell over the shoulder. Can't quite get up to it. So it'll be third down. And four. That was a poorly thrown ball. Caldwell was wide open. Again, no, no mystery here. Man to man coverage. You got Caldwell wide open. The ball sails on Chris and uh, not making plays. Well, here we are, 7 0 South Carolina. And why well, look at this. would we have this with us? <laughs> well, there's a lot of teams that are happy with this team, aren't they? I mean, from Arkansas to Florida, USC, Texas. I mean, there's teams that are in the hunt. That's why we said in the open, style points are going to yeah. mean a lot. Now, everybody's going to vibe. Everybody's looking to vote because of what Rutgers did in this BCS game. Well, it was a thrilling game. Rutgers now one of four remaining undefeateds in Division <laughs> 1. Deshaun Wynn is in. Goes left and has the first down. First down and 10. And off goes left. It's win again. Out to the 30-yard line. Well, Florida has earned the right to uh, play in the SEC championship game in Atlanta the first weekend in December. Urban Meyer, that was one of his goals to get them into yeah, the championship game. Urban Meyer talked to us about his offense yesterday, and we've seen him say about it this year. He's not been, he says, I'm almost embarrassed. He says, at times we've been functional. That's the word he used. And he said, at other times, we look like the bad new bears out there. Ooh, that's not good when you're trying to play in the, for a national championship. Second and six, Percy Harvin, number eight, out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, is the tailback. Lewis Murphy starts in motion. They hand it off to Harvin. He gets a good block and moves it out across the 30 to the 37-yard line. Jasper Brinkley, number 52. Well, you know, the Rutgers win has just opened this thing up yeah. for so many teams to earn the right to play in the championship. Well, here we're assuming on this one that, as you can see, that Ohio State beats Michigan, so there's another one-loss team. But who's going to climb up? Who's going to? Everyone right now who votes is looking to cast their vote, okay? And somebody now needs to take charge of this thing. Florida, they got to put points on the board, I believe, and win all their games. First down and 10 after that last run from Harvin. Leak pulls it back. Deep left side, man-on-man -man coverage with Fred Bennett. The catch is made, and there's a flag. Andre Caldwell. What a catch. I mean, they went after the best corner on this football team. Caldwell against Bennett. Watch the technique. Goes inside, then gets upfield. Bennett does a nice job of forcing Caldwell to the sideline, keeps his eyes on the ball. Oh, that's a perfectly thrown football. 
Look at all the hand checking. That's what's called little hand checking there. Pass interference. Oh, did he catch Number that ball? On the he defense. did not catch it, did he? 15 yards no. from the I thought he did. Line. Yeah, it's just going to be called pass down. interference. Yeah, I thought he had control of it when he went out of bounds. Right. But. The ball goes through his hands right there. The ball hits the ground. Good call by the official. And so the 15-yard penalty. Another look. Andre Caldwell, Freddie Bennett. Well, it looked like both of them were pushing off on that play, didn't it? I mean, Caldwell shoved as much at the end as Bennett did early. He officially had one flag, though. He called the early one. He uh, only got one flag. That's it, huh? <laughs> First down and 10. After the penalty, across midfield. The handoff comes right. Deshaun Webb has some room. Out of bounds at the 36-yard line. They might give him the 35. Jasper Brinkley, number 13. <laughs> I love Deshaun Wynn, but he ought to go over there. You see Deshaun Wynn, what his stats are so far. But it's also fun to watch Billy Lats go number 42. When you see number 42 right there, got the arrow on him, he just seals it off. And look at which Wynn gets to the outside. I really believe that Wynn is the key to this offense. Look at Lats go, fit up. He fits up perfectly, gets that face mask right on the shoulders and allows that running back to get outside. That's a gain of 13 and a first down at the 35. There's Latsko again. Play fake. Leak has time across the middle. Wide open. It's Harvin. No. Andre Caldwell. Five instead of eight. Flag is down. And Leak's reaction would uh, lead us to believe it's going to come back. Yeah, look at that. Man-to-man -man coverage. Watch this technique. Caldwell comes up, straightens back up, and then goes across the field. He had great Holding patience on the run. Number 63 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. The P first down. Jim Tart, left guard, guy who got the call, and it's so simple out right now. I mean, if, if, if you're calling plays, you just call any pass play you want because you know you've got man-to-man -man coverage. Number 63 is the guy who's called on. Gets and just has a takedown right there. We started to lose his man. Don't think he tried to do it. But once the guy spun on him, you saw the official, the umpire had him right in front of him, called the holding penalty. Well, that's one to file away when you think back Big about play. this game. A 28 yard gain to the seven, wiped out by the holding call. Wynn comes right, then heads back to his left and picks up a couple. Seven to nothing, South Carolina here, second down. At 18. South Carolina will bring four. There's the pass to the 35-yard line. It's Andre Caldwell. Well, we saw Penn State, Vern, and the rolled-up pants aren't there for Joe Pop, but we got the visor here. You know, I mean, you, there's certain things that you expect, and I was kind of glad that Steve was on that side of the field so the sun was in his eye mm -hmm. so we could get the visor. You know, he was here as an assistant coach in 1979. He was the quarterback's coach at Georgia Tech. He said nobody paid much attention yeah. back then. Third down and 10. All right, just man-to-man -man all over the field. Savelle Newton deep. That's the former, They're still the current quarterback, and here's Leak down. It'll be fourth down. Fourth and 13. And how costly the holding call on Jim Tart that wiped out a first and goal at the seven yard line. I like the fact South Carolina has two guys back there to field the punt. Good strategy. That way one guy doesn't have to run the 50 yards and they can stop it so it doesn't roll down to the one or two yard line. Fair catch taken by Kenny McKinley, the wide receiver, and a 30 yard punt. 61 years of age. 12 of those years spent in the swamp. Not that he's emotional or anything. <laughs> South Carolina leads it by seven, 9.52 to go, second quarter. I knew that. It's time for the trivia question of the week. Which current SEC head coaches have defeated their alma mater? This is a pretty good one. Hmm. This is a pretty good one. Spurrier, of course, is Last one of the group. Year. Yeah. That Last was going to be mine. I was going to give you the other ones if there was any more. You got them? <laughs> <laughs> no, I go that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Earl Everett is back on the field for the Gators. Here's the toss. Left side. 
And the tackle made on Mike Davis out near the 13 yard line. Brandon Seiler playing with a bum knee. Blake Mitchell was the starter at the beginning of the year. Had a really good season last year. Uh, ineffective early in the season. Pulled for Savelle Newton. Newton went four and three as a starter, and Blake Mitchell from LaGrange, Georgia, said he tried to maintain his pace. Yeah, I think also the team has gotten a little better since Blake has gotten back in. The offensive line a little more solid. Early he was just getting rushed too much. They couldn't keep him in the game. Now he's more effective. From the eye on second down. Draw play. Nice move by Davis. A better spin move. He's picked up the first down all the way out to the 32-yard line. That's a gain of 20. Well, Davis, as a true freshman last year, started nine games. This time, comes in and watch the eraser, number one, right here. He ran out of whiteout. Watch this. He ran out of whiteout because Davis says, no, no, no. Yeah. Spun right away from him. The normally sure tackling Reggie Nelson. Davis with nine carries for 53 yards. That one for 20. Mitchell back. Earl Everett on the blitz. And the tackle made by Jarvis Moss, who got back in his defensive end position. Second down and six. And Mitchell has hit his last seven in succession. Boyd popped. Third down. Brandon Seiler made the tackle. Well, Savelle Newton was the starter until halftime last week. Do you expect to see them both today? Maybe, if it gets, if it gets crazy. But you see, when Steve did it before, those were quarterbacks. Right now, I think the way Blake's playing and with Savelle Newton on getting all that practice on defense, I don't see it. Maybe, maybe if it gets past rush, it gets crazy. But right now, no reason to change. Third and five. Mitchell has the catch to McKinley. The pass to McKinley. McKinley makes it for a first down out to the 43-yard line. High school quarterback, when you play again, when you run pass routes for Steve, you get the guy moving one way, you come inside. Steve Spurrier does not respect the man-to-man -man abilities of Florida. There might be a reason for that. Last year, in this football game, Florida, they played a lot of man. They had four pass interference plays in that football game. Greg Madison said we will play more zone in this one. And how about the Gamecocks? Four of six on third down conversions. Here in the first half, first and ten, Mitchell, quick setup. Sidney Rice gets a great block from McKinley and leans across the 50 to the 48-yard line. Tony Joyner and Ryan Smith. Sidney Rice this year, he had a great freshman season. Of course, he had the big Florida Atlantic game where he had five touchdown passes, but look at that pass route, pass route he ran against Tennessee and, of course, the big catch against Arkansas on the fade. He is one of those guys that you put it up in the air and let him go and get it. Spurrier said to us, the one thing we don't do is want to overthrow it to him because even a short pass, he can make the play. He's got five catches already in this one. And here is Corey Boyd breaking tackles right, and getting okay. down to the 41. Young man from Orange, New Jersey. Found yep. his way down to South Carolina. Excuse me, Vern. I have not seen anybody run the ball on Florida like this all year. Now, you can attribute that a little bit to Marcus Thomas, attribute it a little bit to the injury to Siler, and I think you can attribute it a lot to the pass offense that's working so well for South Carolina. Yep. Mitchell, 11 of 14. On first down, here's the toss to Boyd. We had a chance to talk to Corey Boyd and Craig Silver, our producer, asked him on the phone the other day from Orange, New Jersey, did he think about Rutgers? Really? What did he say? And he said, yes, he did, but they wanted to make him a defensive back. South Carolina was the only school that offered him a position as a running back. But uh, he's a Rutgers fan. Yep. I bet he's even more so now. Second and seven, ninth play of the drive. South Carolina has run, this will be their 30th play. Florida has 20. They're controlling the clock and keeping that offense off the field. 
Toss to Davis coming left. Reverse. Sidney Rice pulls up and throws it. And it's tipped by Reggie Nelson. It was intended for Blake Mitchell. There's Steve Spurrier. Yep. And Reggie Nelson was never fooled. But you know what the key to this was? He lined up in the middle of the field so he could see the whole field. He lines up very deep and he uses his speed. There's Reggie right in the middle of the field. When he's in the middle of the field, he again can make plays to both sides. He sees it. It took just a little too long. And Reggie Nelson with that speed almost had a touchdown going the other way. And a late flag has been thrown over here on the 38-yard line. Illegal formation, six men on the line of scrimmage on the offense. That penalty is declined. It'll be third down. Reggie Nelson with four interceptions already. One of them returned for 70 yards and a touchdown. Here's that three-man line from Florida when they only rushed two people last time. Let's see if they do the same look. They bring two. Mitchell for Rice, incomplete. Fourth down. Ryan Smith defending that time. Well, you've only got three guys up there. Here's one, he's running a dash. He's running a dash, coming to the outside, but those are the only two guys. Five guys blocking two, and South Carolina throws a quick slant. Boys, he's gotta punt this one, doesn't he? I would certainly, yes. Yeah, there's no real hurry to punt. Again, a five-yard penalty here doesn't kill South Carolina. Suckup has hit one from 55 Oh, my this year. goodness. He has hit one from 55 against Vanderbilt. He also has one against Tennessee. This will be from 55. He fooled the officials. They're running to the positions. Well, that's got the distance. The, the uh, play was stopped. Delay yes. a game. It did not count. South Carolina will get another play. But that would take it back to Before 60 the snap, yards. Delay of game on the offense. Five-yard penalty remains for him. Got to punt it now, though. Well, the visor stayed on, but the uh, game plan went to the grass. Yeah, you can see it. This official back here is going to make the call. He'll come running up when he sees it goes to zero. Watch this. He comes running up. Steve knows it's the delay. Yo! The visor had the, the headphones on. He couldn't go with the visor. And so, no change of personnel because Suckup is the punter as well as the place kicker. And now they will punt it away. He's been using the rugby punt, running this way and yeah. kicking it low. There it is again, low kick, and over end. Nice bounce. Oh, Taken dude. by Nelson. How about Reggie Nelson? <laughs> what a ball player. <laughs> 35-yard punt, 13 on the return, and CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC will continue after this word from your local station. First down and 10. It's only the third possession of the game for Florida. How about that? With five minutes to go in the half. And each time until now, they've gotten it inside their own 10-yard line. Here's Leak. Flips it out. Right side. After the 26-yard line, that's Percy Harvin, number eight. Number 45, Rocky. Well, Florida... You made the point at the beginning of the afternoon they need to impress a lot of folks around the country because they're battling for uh, yeah. style points. A beauty contest. Well, right now, they'll take any kind of points yeah. they can get. Heck with style yeah. points. Urban Meyer undefeated in the swamp. Backs in the eye. Draw play. Nothing to it. Jasper Brinkley led the way to middle linebacker number 52. He and his brother, Casper, twins, uh, spent last season at Georgia Military College. They're from Thompson, Georgia. 
and we chatted with Jasper earlier this week and said anything funny between the two of you because they are identical. Casper's older by a minute. He said, well, when we were growing up, I got into some trouble with my grandmother. She said, which one are you? And I said, I'm Casper. <laughs> and when mom came home, Jasper avoided the whipping that Casper got. Third down. Leak out of the gun. Three-man rush. Leak flips it at the 30-yard line. This is Percy Harvin again, who this time had lined up wide to the left. That's a gain of nine. And it's one of those little plays that uh, if you don't get the first down, everybody's saying, now why did you throw this ball three yards? South Carolina went with a deep drop, threw a three, five yard pass that time, and let Harvin pick up the ball, pick up the first down with his legs. Florida with all three timeouts remaining, under three to go, first half. Percy Harvin will rest on this play. Backs in the eye, let's go as the fullback. And Deshaun Wynn is the deep back. Play fake. Dallas Baker is held up and uh, leak. Now there's a flag down at the 50 yard line. This could be a hold yep. that avoided Dallas Baker getting free. Captain Munnerlin again grabbing. As I think a Caldwell was going to beat him at the line of scrimmage. And, uh, you know, when you're playing man to man and there's about 70 yards of grass behind you, you have a tendency to grab the guy as he's going by. Now, the ball wasn't thrown here, so let's see what happens. See, look at that. No. Oh, a yank by Caldwell. Number one on the defense. That penalty will be 10 yards from the previous spot. And will yeah, I had my eyes down. on Baker, and it was Caldwell who was Yeah. Out. Now, Caldwell did it as much. Yeah, that's exactly what I think. Caldwell grabbed Munnerlin just as much as Munnerlin grabbed him. Again, he only got one flag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, these I could have shortened been. the games would last a while. First down and 10. Leak pulls it back. That's Finally has to set. Oh, boy. Down to the 45. That was ever so dangerous. Deshaun Wynn with the catch. Offensive coordinator. And play caller Urban Meyer were saying, no, 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 don't throw this one. Backing up all the way across the field. Oh, my. Chris Leak says, thank God. <laughs> oh, my. He just assumed the running back would be wide open, and that was not a good assumption. And it's good for a first down at the 46-yard line. 2.02 to go. Leak back. Little crossing pattern to Harvin. He reverses field. And he's to the 35. The clock will stop now because that is a first down, a gain of 11. The clock will stop while they reset the chain. When Harvin gets that football, three Gamecocks had an opportunity to get him, and they lose leverage. Harvin comes across, gets the ball. One guy stopped. There's one and two. Third guy's going to come into your picture right there. Snap is made. Leak. Throws it out of bounds. And a flag way, way downfield. Well, the visor's getting ready to be flung if this is against South Carolina. Right now, the defensive backs for South Carolina are, are getting tired, and they're grabbing on every play. Here's Steve Shaw. Substitution infraction, number one on the defense. The player came on the field during the play to give them a lay of players. That'll be a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. He first down. Captain Munnerlin. Well, Steve Spurrier has defeated his alma mater. I, 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 my timing is yes. off. <laughs> And it's time for the Aflac answer. Sylvester Croom, Rich Brooks are the other two. First down and five from the 30-yard line. Here's Leak pulling up. He's got a man open. That's the tight end, Cornelius Ingram, number seven, who started his career on campus as the fourth-string quarterback, also was a basketball player, highly touted, played one year for the Gators, and almost put this team back in the spring. And Vernell Brown, a starting cornerback last year, said, wait a minute. 
They're going to put you at tight end. Talk Courtney Ingram into sticking with the ball club, and he's made valuable contributions. Yeah. And tight end in this offense is a, kind of a misnomer. You get to line up like that all the time. First down and 10. Leap pumps. Goes back deep. Got a man open. Underthrown, but Baker has the catch. Leak to Baker. Urban Meyer's team within one of tying it up. Dallas Baker, who was the only man on this Florida roster who was actually signed by the Steve Spurrier coaching group. He then spent a year at a high school in Massachusetts getting his grades up. Well, that was a, a woefully underthrown football that Dallas Baker saved Chris Leak on. He tries with the play call to get a little motion going to his right. But watch Baker how open he is to the outside. Fred Bennett is seven yards behind, and then Fred Bennett says, I'm going to catch it. And Dallas Baker intercepts it from B Fred Bennett. Wow. Savelle Newton defending Dallas Baker with the extra point. Chris Leak's team has tied this one up. 125 to go before the halftime break, 7-7. Dallas Baker said he was coming to uh, Florida regardless. His uncle, Wes Chandler, was one of the great players here back in the 70s. Dallas from New Smyrna Beach said the biggest event of his high school career was when the head ball coach came, came, in, and came into school. How about that? Gerald Odom, who was his high school coach, actually was a teammate of Steve Spurrier's here. He was a, a senior fresh in Spurrier's freshman year um, at New Smyrna Beach, about uh, 30 miles south of Daytona Beach. And oh. so, 7-7, seven, seven, Gary. Vern, both teams have been able to drive the ball. Not a lot of stops, and that's why each team has only had the ball three times. Kick from Joey Eos is taken by Corey Boyd. And he uh, gets back to the 20, maybe the 21 officially. Here's an interesting bit of strategy now for South Carolina and Florida. Florida has all three timeouts. The clock is going to start. It's going to start to run. This is the one part of the game that I don't like the new clock. I think in the last four minutes of each half, it should stop until you snap the ball on first down. It is running with 55 seconds to go. Four man down. Gators bring five. And uh, Mike Davis is tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Now let's see if... Either team opts to use a timeout. See, it just took some of the strategy out of the football game right there. Florida saved their timeouts. They did a good job. So in that situation, normally, if you have Florida has three timeouts, they could have forced a stop and forced South Carolina to punt the football. But with that new clock, you really can't do it. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, apparent that uh, we're going to let the clock expire as we reach the 22nd mark. Barring a, a turnover of some sort. Handoff goes to Mike Davis in what should be the final play of the first half. Urban Meyer in his second season here. Steve Spurrier in his second season at South Carolina. Welcome back to the Swamp. Sun setting in the west as we get ready for the third quarter. This game being brought to you on CBS in high definition television. And just a moment ago, Urban Meyer stopped by to chat with Tracy Wilson. Coach, what do you need to do to put more points on the board? Well, we had three possessions in the first half, and that's a product of them running the ball on us. And then uh, the, the problem is on two of the possessions, we walked away without points. Missed a field goal and had a penalty and a sack. So. It, it, there, I think uh, South Carolina is shortening the game a little bit. And uh, we, we just got to score when we get down there. We can't let them run the ball on us. They're running the ball real well on us, and that usually doesn't happen. Thanks a lot, Coach. All right, thank you, Trace. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson here in the Swamp 7-7 seven, seven as we start the third. And it's time now for the Home Depot Tools 
for success. Gary? Well, you know, Vern, I've always said when you're in the toolbox, you got to measure and do things right. But when you got a leaky pipe, you just do whatever you can do. And this offense was leaking, and Chris Leak says, I don't care what I grab onto, and I'll throw anything I can. And he ended up putting a little duct tape to make this thing go. You know, what's this, our ninth game together, it's I think? tools for you to grab yeah, anything you can. You got a leaky pipe, you got to do it, don't I'm you? I'm as impressed with the variety <laughs> of approaches you take to this as anything. Just reach in that toolbox and grab whatever you can. Uh, I'd grab a screwdriver backwards, <laughs> I'm sure. Ryan Suckup will kick off as uh, Florida gets the ball to open the third. And as Urban Meyer just told Tracy, they can't get downfield and not get points. Here's Brandon James. Well, here you go. Flag is down all the way back at the 16. And you know what that usually means. Well, it happened against Tennessee. We saw it, didn't we? Yes. Brandon James in that Tennessee game had an 89-yard punt return wiped out by an illegal block in the back. What do we got here? During the return, illegal block in the back, number 56 <laughs> on the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal, first and 10. Now let's see if we can uh, see the play. We also said from the right side, there it is right there. There's the block. Okay. There's the hit right there. And, and we saw it. I think it was it was it the Georgia game. We saw another one of these mm -hmm. where Brandon James had one of those plays. And now we see another one. I got to tell you, on that one, the guy that was going got blocked in the back, he could have made the tackle. That, that had to be caught. And so it wipes out a 55-yard gain and gives, for the third time in four possessions, Florida has the ball. Inside the eight yard line. Here's Leak at the goal line. Puts it out, caught by Ingram. And Ingram is out to the 21 yard line as they uh, are tied in this game. Chris Hetland missed that 29 yard field goal. Well, Gary, you said at the beginning that this was a beauty contest for Florida. So far, they're miscongeniality. Yeah, you're right. And it, it doesn't make any difference now. It's win ugly, baby. They, don't, they, they have to win first. Maybe everybody else will lose. You know, at this point, well, listen, Chris Leak. He's got a hot hand. He's found right. his rhythm. He got away with a couple throws. Deshaun Wynn is producing yards. South Carolina is effective when they got the ball. I think you got to let Chris Leak and Deshaun Wynn be the center of your offense. And so a first down play to Ingram. And Leak has hit his last eight passes in succession. Handoff left side. That's Percy Harvin, number eight. And let's check the halftime numbers. Well, when you only get the ball three times each, now South Carolina had it a fourth time, but they were just taking a knee. Not a lot can happen, but you can see that, and, and Urban Meyer was right. Remember that penalty when he had Florida had that pass down here about the 15-yard line and right. put it back, then the missed field goal? You can't make mistakes in a slow-down game. This is a slow-down game. Second down and one. Dallas Baker in motion. Whoa, bat snap. Leak gets it in his hands and takes the loss back to the 26-yard line. Yeah, and that was going to go to Deshaun Wynn that time, number 21, and uh, another self-inflicted wound by, you know, an offense. And, and again, you know, Urban Meyer said, sometimes we look like the bad news bears. And here's the case right here. You're trying to win a national championship. You just can't make mistakes like that. And that was the center, Steve Rissler, who uh, sent it about seven feet high. A loss of four, and it becomes third and five. Missed field goal, a punt, and a touchdown on the three possessions in the first half. League steps up, pumps once. That's complete to Percy Harvin. Kid can fly. He's all the way to the 49-yard line. Stoney Woodson, number three, makes the tackle, but a 23-yard gain. South Carolina does not like to substitute. This time, the matchup against first a safety and then a middle linebacker. And you could see it. Jasper Brinkley had no chance with that speed. He had one guy forcing it into the middle linebacker, and the middle linebacker not fast enough to make that play. Harvin stays in the tailback spot. And Tate Casey, the tight end, is on the field. First down and 10. Leak straight, drop back, flips it out. And it leads Harvin by 
a yard too much. Great play by Cody Wells that time. The outside linebacker just felt that wide pass, ran with the tailback all the way, and there was nowhere to put that football. Deshaun Wynn comes on the field. Harvin heads to the bench. There's Wells. A second down and 10. Hand off on the uh, reverse, or not a reverse, really just an end around yeah. on Mike Caldwell. One of those sweeps from the wide receiver set that this offense for Urban Meyer has featured when he brought it here. That's what he did at Bowling Green. That's what he did at Utah. And that's what he's attempted to do here. Well, attempting, I think, because you asked him yesterday, is this the spread offense? He's, well, not his spread offense. Right. Not the one he brought. <laughs> and it's third and nine. Got a hot quarterback, though, here, Vern, and, uh, and, uh, and it's man-to-man -man coverage. There's no secret here what South Carolina is going to do. Latsko goes back to provide blocking help for Leak. Leak comes to the near side. He's got the pass. Complete at the 41. Very close for the first down. Dallas Baker makes the catch, number we, 81. We saw this route against Alabama. One-on-one -on -one coverage, off coverage. Baker runs out there. Again, man-to-man, -man, no decision-making. It's very close, by the way, for the first down. It's right at the mark. It probably will be a measurement, but again, you got a hot quarterback. you got a receiver, Dallas Baker, that South Carolina has not been able to match up with. Throw him the football. Yes. But That's pretty elemental. Doesn't make, make a lot of strategy, <laughs> right? <laughs> And so the stretch. Just a little short. Smidgen. Yeah. And, and on a 40 yard line, you got to go for this. Fourth down. Going to bring in Tebow, aren't they? Yes. Here it is that uh, quick out to the outside. Good throw. Ball brought him backwards. Yellow line right on there. It's within inches either way. Tebow runs. He said he preferred running the quarterback sneak from shotgun. He did this on fourth and one at Tennessee, and Florida came back to win it 21 to 20. Freddie Bennett has to stay alert right here. Must stay alert. Tebow, the second leading rusher on the team, the freshman from nearby St. Augustine, greater Jacksonville area. He'll come left, and he's got it plus three. Only Tebow's second play of this football game. He had a second down play, and now he's had a fourth down play. Just follow number 42. You don't have to be a junior or senior to know if you follow 42. Even if you're a true freshman, you know that's a good, pretty good odds. Chris Leak back on the four-year starter, the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Two wide receivers wide to the right. Leak looks deep, goes deep, it's intercepted. Picked off at the 15-yard line by Stoney Woodson, number 36. And he is still running free. A flag is down inside the 20. And a player is down for Florida. It's Dallas Baker. Sure is. Either left knee or left ankle. You know, that was a real strange play because Jamel Cornelius, number six, never cleared the area for that deep throw. And that the pickoff comes from a guy who's not even covering the intended receiver. After the change of possession, illegal block in the back, number eight against South Carolina, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It'll be South Carolina's ball, first and 10. See, Chris Leak thinks he's got man-to-man -man coverage, but this is the guy who's going to make the interception. This is the guy he's throwing the football to, I believe. But it's one of those, cro let's see if it's a crossing route from the other side. Yes, it is. Watch, he throws it to the inside guy, and the outside defender makes the play. That's a bad design of a route or a miss route by the receiver. That shouldn't happen. 10.43 to go, 7-7. Chris Leak having thrown his first interception of this ball game. And Caldwell's getting an earful from uh, Urban Meyer. First down and 10 after the interception and the penalty. 
Ball at the 11. Mitchell, Sidney Rice. Out across the 20 to the 23-yard line. Well, Florida tied 7-7. They have delivered unto themselves some self-inflicted wounds. You know, I guess you are what you are. And Florida's come this far in the season, and all Gator fans are saying, we've been seeing these miscues all year. We've been keeping ourselves from scoring 30 points with plays like that, a bad snap, and either a long route or a misread by your quarterback or a bad route somewhere. You got man-to-man -man coverage. The other guy shouldn't make an interception. First down and 10. Flag is down. This uh, Florida team came in ranked 116 among Dead 119 Number 77. teams in Division oh, One, but this is against South early. Carolina. Still first down. Florida has not been able to cover number four. That guy one on one has been uncoverable. They back away from him, and Blake Mitchell looks his direction. Great downfield coverage. Mitchell tucks it and throws it. Wow! open. Andy Boyd, the tight end, his first catch of the year. <laughs> Is there something more than wide open? It, it, it looks like he was the first guy on the field for practice. Andy Boyd is at tight end. I wouldn't cover him either. I mean, he's right here, right at the bottom. When when ball goes this way, and then coming back, and there goes Boyd right up the sideline. See Mitchell, he gets in the pocket. Boyd is out, and Reggie Nelson leaves Boyd. Number one, trying to make a play more than the defense, Reggie Nelson leaves him. And could you see that? The whole bench for Florida was pointing to the open guy, and Blake Mitchell saw him. How about that? 48 yards, first down and 10 at the 33-yard line. 48 yards. Mitchell goes deep, left side, man coverage wide open. Incomplete. Reggie Lewis, number 22, defending. Well, Reggie Lewis, when that ball was in the air, there was no panic. Got a good receiver out there. South Carolina says, don't throw it short. So, excuse me, don't throw it long. This one wasn't long, and Reggie Lewis got that paw in there at the last second. It almost was a Dallas Baker touchdown, but Reggie Lewis, the ex-receiver, made the play. Second and 10, Reggie Lewis, who orally committed to LSU. Then Steve Spurrier called him and said, why don't you think about Florida? He reconsidered, Spurrier left, <laughs> and Lewis honored his commitment to come and play here. Second down. Little screen pass, tipped. Might have been Latrell Olford, number 99. I'm not sure which one got a hand up, but it will bring up a third down. I'm still stunned at that 48-yarder yeah. to Andy Boyd. That way, and, and it was, again, one of your playmakers, Reggie Nelson, sees all the flow going one way, sees Blake Mitchell lose, looking over there and says, I'm going to leave my guy, and all of a sudden it comes back the other way. Andy Boyd, who has missed two, almost the equivalent of two full seasons with torn ACLs, was given a sixth year by the NCAA. Yeah. He's one of six scholarship seniors on this football team. He originally signed the scholarship to play football here. Third down and ten. Three men down, they bring five. Blake Mitchell lets it go. It's caught by Boyd, but short of the first down after 30. It will be fourth down, and I would expect we'll see Ryan Suckup, who has hit 12 of 13 this season. Missed from 55 earlier, but that one, the miss was negated by a delay of game call. Here is Ryan Suckup, the sophomore from Hickory, North Carolina, from 47 yards out to break the tie. Ike Crowfoot is the holder. What? Reggie Lewis picks it up. Special teams. Boy. This Florida team blocked two punts last week. What a turn of events. The Florida defense bowed their neck, got a stop, and then special teams came through. 47-yard field goal right through the middle. I think it was Ray McDonald that looked like they got through the middle that time. 
It was either Joe Cohen or Ray McDonald. Either one of them could have got it. And Spurs, I should have gone for it. What am I thinking about? I should just go for it up for that. Bird's eye view of Ben Hill Griffin Stadium, Longhorn Steakhouse, providing today's aerial coverage of the South Carolina Florida game. Look for Longhorn Steakhouse as they team up with CBS Sports for the rest of the fall football season. You know, we talked about the great success that Florida had with special teams. It's been the exact opposite for South Carolina. We should get into that three big games. Special teams let them down. Will it be a fourth here today? Best field position to start a drive for the Gators today. Here's Deshaun Wynn coming left. Can't quite turn the corner. Freddie Bennett, number eight. Well, Urban Meyer, the emphasis on special teams. Last couple of years. They have excelled. Yeah. It's, it, it's being taught all around the country now about the same. You know, everybody knows these are big plays. And uh, when you have great athletes like uh, Urban does here in Florida, they seem to make more big plays. Those are Frank Beamer numbers, yes. like Virginia Tech where they specialize in block kicks. Second and six in a 7-7 ball game. Standard eye formation now with three wide receivers on the field. Leak with a fake, goes right, caught by Cornelius. And he's got a first down at the 35-yard line. Tim Tebow is on the field. He's rushed twice so far on first down and 10. No, he will not. Goes right this time and is spilled as he gets to the 28-yard line by Savelle Newton. How about that? Yeah, well, quarterback on quarterback, and the scouting report was followed by Savelle Newton. Tyrone Nix, defensive coordinator at South Carolina, told us, we're not going to try to take this guy on high. We're going low, and Newton says, I'm no dummy. I'm going for those shoes. Savelle Newton, who uh, has played wide receiver, quarterback, and now defensive back. And Tebow for... The season, 49 runs, eight passes, and when he's in the game, other guys have rushed it seven times. Yeah. Where does that jump pass go? Is that others, or is that considered a pass? Well, it goes in my uh, memory book. <laughs> sure does. There's the play. They scored on this one to Murphy earlier. Nobody's fooled here. Jamel Cornelius, the intended receiver. They tried that same play yep. to Lewis Murphy and got a touchdown out of it. See, earlier in the season. It's not quite as effective when you're doing it against a man-to-man -man defense because the outside players are playing bump and run. They don't even see this fake by Tebow. It's just one-on-one, -on -one and Munderland to the outside says, what fake? I didn't see any fake. I was just running with my guy all the way down the field and almost had a chance to make a pickoff. And so third down. And Tebow will take this from the spread. How many guys can you put in the box? That's how many will be there. Mm -hmm. Bad snap. Tebow's caught and dropped. So the best field position for Florida in the ball game goes a wasting. Casper Brinkley with the tackle lost 16 yards. Well, they put in a taller quarterback, but the snap was just as high. This one goes right over Tebow. Oh, it was right there as Harvin, Harvin. came through. Harvin was in the way. That is another self-inflicted wound by people not just not running the play right. It was supposed to be a fake, not a snap with those two guys. We're like two planes crossing right there. That will not work. And so Eric Wilbur has to come on on fourth and 18. Fair catch called. It will go into the end zone and come out to the 20. What? I don't know if there's anything more frustrating. I mean, it, it didn't happen all that many times in my career, but when you think you can do anything and you're not getting it done as a quarterback, that is as frustrating as it can be. Florida, another way not to make a first down with no points to tie football game. First down and 10. Find number four and throwing some hook routes out there. They'll keep it on the ground, and Corey Boyd goes out to the 27-yard line. Brandon Seiler, number 40, made the tackle. You know, Urban Meyer in his second year at Florida. Steve Spurrier, his first two years here, began in 90 and then uh, 91. He was 19 and 4. Meyer keeping pace. Yes, sure is. His home games, especially. And he's got a battle here in the home field. I think the most impressive thing is Urban Meyer has beat the big guys. And he's won a lot of games against the big guys in this conference. Second down and one, 7 7.
Don't think so. No, it'll be third down. Well, you know, Urban Meyer, inevitably, there was so much talk uh, leading up to this game about Spurrier's return. He was asked Monday, is there a shadow cast by Steve? He said, absolutely yeah, there, is. there is. I'm cleaning it up a little bit. But he said there should be. Uh, you know, he left a legacy that here that, that is remarkable. And it would be like Bo Schembechler at Michigan, sure. Woody Hayes, Daryl Royal at Texas. Well, Urban wouldn't have wanted this job as it wasn't for Steve making it into a great job. Third and one. Hand off. Got it. Boyd squirts through. First down, South Carolina. Well, this is a... Uh, we were trying to compare Spurrier's return here with other interesting <laughs> coaches. I love the one, the guy on the left, Hank Scram, who went back to Kansas City. Phil Jackson. Lakers. With the Lakers. Billy Martin, Oakland. Rick Pitino in Louisville. How did they fare? We'll have the answer for you. Yeah. That'd be nice forcing to play golf, those guys, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. There'd be some good conversation. There'd be some them. stories. Yep. First down and 10. Boyd. Out to the 41 yard line. 340 to go, third quarter. Again, you see Steve showing the patience. I, I think only one call all game, I would have argued with uh, Spurrier's play calling. It was that reverse pass back to the quarterback where Reggie Nelson knocked it down. That's the only time they've got out. Otherwise, he's been balanced. They've run the ball 21 times, they passed the ball 21 times. By the way, Florida's the same way 21 and 22. Balanced attacks, but only seven points each. Second down and two at the 41 yard line. That'll be close for the first down at the 44 yard line, a carry made by Mike Davis. Well, I promised we'd have the answers of those returns. I know that uh, Rick Patino's first trip back to Kentucky, they were thrashed by Kentucky, lost by 20, as a matter of fact. Hank Stram won, Phil Jackson won, Billy Martin won. That's a bonus trivia question. Yes. I've got another one. I've got another one. You probably got a deal. I did. Well, well, no. Aflac deal. You probably get a free Aflac or whatever. <laughs> I do have ducks in my house. First down and 10. 7-7. Seven, seven. Blake Mitchell, Mike Davis. Look at this. Nice run. How about the swerving ability of Davis? They are running the ball really yep. well against Florida. Yeah, and uh, they've done, you know, they're so effective throwing the ball. Don't have Marcus Thomas. Let's be, you know, honest about that. I think Siler is not 100%. He ran right out of the picture on that one. Siler's playing at maybe 75%. And uh, the patience of this South Carolina offense is working. Now, watch, give him a little rice to the outside. You know, about a six, eight yard, 12 hook or a nice pass to the outside, spread that defense and then tack the middle again. South Carolina over 100 yards now. 107 yards on the ground, a first and 10 at the 45. Mitchell will throw. Fires it. Beauty. Caught. Flag is down. Catch is made at the 33 yard line by Kenny McKinley. That's a gain of 12 if it stands. Gary mentioned in the first half he was a four year starter high school quarterback. Weighed only 165 pounds. I love this route for a couple reasons. As a quarterback, you know, go down there, hook in front of him, now it's basketball. Post him up, throw him the ball, go up and give it. The other thing as a quarterback, you Pass just start throwing to a spot. Number 28 on the defense. That penalty will be declined. The play gained more yardage than the foul. It will be a first and 10. Let me continue why. The linebackers oftentimes, you have to make sure you don't lead a guy into a linebacker. When that receiver stopped and looking at you, you can miss to the right or to the left, and that receiver can go both ways. It doesn't have to be a perfect pass. It's actually the easiest pass to throw as a quarterback. First down and 10. Rice goes wide left, so does McKinley. Lewis and Smith go out to cover them, and they're both laying off. Here comes Smith on the blitz. It's picked up, oh. and there's Boyd oh. inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. That was, an, that was an outstanding run by Boyd and a good block. I don't know if it was on Joe Cohen, but he went off the field. You see the pulling guard coming. That's actually, actually, that's Stafford right there. Lennard Stafford 
Number 39, follow that guy and look at that pirouette. Nicely done by Corey Boyd. Pirouette? Is, uh, I like that. that. Uh, Have worked, you ever had that one before? I worked with a guy named Terry Bradshaw <laughs> who once said, yeah, and he turned around nicely too. <laughs> Pirouette. Second down. And a flag comes from the near side. Brandon Spikes makes this tackle along with Brian Cum on Mike Davis. For the day, Mitchell 15 of 21 for 155. Brandon Spikes obviously in the game for Siler. Maybe the defensive coaches are seeing what I'm seeing. Not 100%. There's Brandon Spikes, number 51. Yep. I think he got nicked on the play before. I'm looking down and I wonder if both he and Cohen went off with a little nick on the play before. Ah, oh, illegal block against South Carolina. There's Brandon Seiler. Certainly, I, I would think the vocal leader of this team. Here's. Illegal block. Below the waist, number 11, crack back block. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat second down. Now you see McKinley come in motion, and then he goes low to take on Joyner. You cannot do that when you come in motion. you got to block above the waist. Good call. That's a safety issue, and that was changed up a few years ago, and that's a good rule. And so with one second to go in the third, second down, and 18. Mitchell steps up, hit as he lets it go. It's caught by Mike West, number 23. Who was he throwing that one to? Mm. I don't know if he was trying to get that to Sidney Rice over the middle, and it just deflected to someone else on the play. He's trying to go downfield, and it just squirts out of his arm, and that's, a, that's the way it goes sometimes. We saw a team win a game like that last week, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Jamarcus Russell trying to throw the ball to the back of the end zone, and early Doucette intercepts it. And so the catch leaves us with a third and six and a score of seven to seven. That's the end of three, seven, seven ball game. We'll return to Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Right after this word from your local station. In a game Steve Spurrier called his greatest moment as Florida head coach, the Gators rang in the new year and overwhelmed arch rival Florida State in the Sugar Bowl to win the national title. The Florida Gators, the 1996 national champions. And so it is remembered inside the swamp with a large banner painted in the south end zone of Ben Hill Griffin. We begin the fourth. Steve Spurrier's team tied with Urban Meyer's team. It's 7-7. Seven, seven. One on one on Rice out here to the top of the screen. And playing way off. Yep. Mitchell, quick setup inside, tipped incomplete. Mike West, the intended receiver, that brings up fourth down. And in all likelihood, we're going to see Ryan Suckup come on to try and break the tie. His last field goal was blocked. Steve Spurrier insisted to us that the drama, the emotion was out of this because he'd been back here twice. I don't believe that. No. <laughs> Well, I think he sold his team on that. Yeah. And, that, and that's good strategy. I said, don't be intimidated. I've been there a couple times. They're already, listen, Steve Spurrier's got a system he believes in. He runs it. He teaches it. And when he gets pressure, he expects his guys to perform. Suck up from 47 yards to give South Carolina the lead. Oh, that was perfect. One blocked, one made, and the old ball coach's team leads by three. 
just underway in the final stanza from this one. Ten seven on the sideline. Sidney Rice, only a sophomore, already the career leader in touchdown catches, with twenty and for the day, six catches for sixty yards. Remember, he's a redshirt sophomore. That means he is eligible to leave. That kills you when you redshirt a guy and then he leaves after two years. You got two more years to to be around. Do you, do you kick it kick it to number twenty five back there? Ah, uh, I don't know. I don't I, think so. I, I wouldn't. Of course, I saw Rutgers kick it deep to, oh my goodness. to Louisville the oh other night. Goodness. Urban Meyer said he was watching that when Rutgers right. had the lead and kicked it deep, and he jumped up out of his chair. Yeah, the kicker made the tackle. Oh. Greg Schiano, great win. What were you thinking? <laughs> and uh, so we wait. Here's Keiston Moore, who's deep. Yeah, I kick it to 33 instead yeah. of 25. I can't. I mean, if I could angle it, I'd, I'm angling it. This is uh, yeah, it plants this one. Comes out to the 20, and let's check in once again with Tracy Wolfs. Well, thanks, guys. As you just mentioned, all week Steve Spurrier hasn't been saying much about his return, but I got a little out of him before the game. I said, Coach, it must have been a little strange coming onto this field with a different team, and he said, yeah, it was a bit strange. But once the game starts, it's all about calling plays. Like you. All right, Tracy. He's made two trips down here because uh, – South Carolina played two Thursday night games earlier in the year. He was here for the reunion of the 96th NCAA champions and then came back for the Ring of Honor installation and said those two ovations he got were the loudest he's ever had in his life and very much appreciated. Now here's the run up the middle. Deshaun Wynn, Savelle Newton. The quarterback saves the touchdown. I, I tell you, I, I just don't get it. I've been saying this for five weeks watching this team. I don't understand what they don't like about number 21. You know, he was nicked a bit, I know, but and he had almost begged for the football against Georgia in that football game. And uh, their best, Florida is best when number 21 has run the football. Gained over 100 against Tennessee in that great win on the road against Tennessee. 22 on that carry. 77. Most since September. Here's Leak. He's got a man that can't get there. Bubba Caldwell, number five, on the uh, crossing route. It'll be second down and ten. I don't know if we'll see Tebow, except for short yardage or goal line situations. I, I think you got to hand the ball to Chris Leak now. He's 14 for 20. He's been on target all day. You got a running back who can run the ball. And 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 to be honest, South Carolina is just playing man-to-man -man defense and saying you can't beat us, Florida receivers. Come on, have you heard that many times in the swamp? I'm you, just thinking that. You can't beat us, Florida receivers? Wow. Second down and 10. From the 40, a 10-7 South Carolina lead. Sweep. Caldwell comes right. Cuts it up to the 47, perhaps the 48-yard line. With 13.45 to go. Third and three. Well, this is a uh, Florida team that has had well-documented problems putting points on the board. At home, they've yet to score over 30 in any of their SEC games. The last time that happened was 1988. Right. And, and this is the first time this year they've even trailed in the fourth quarter at home. New territory. Third and three. Leak goes left, pulls it up, fires it. Caught. Ingram to the 25-yard line. And Savelle Newton again makes the tackle. A 22-yard run by Deshaun Wynn. Now a 27-yard pass from Chris Leak to his tight end, Cornelius Ingram. Same rub play they always run. They're going to come out this way and rub off a receiver right there that's going to kind of get a block right to the outside. You'll see it come in. Ingram goes out. There's the rub right there. And it comes right underneath it with a nice pitch and catch. Boy, that was right on target. That was a money throw, third down throw, and he came through. On first down from the 25, he'll go from the gun. Three, 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 three. 
handoff. They try to sweep, and this one goes nowhere. Andre Caldwell tackled by Cook, Emmanuel Cook, number 21. Well, we talked about the, the struggles here, have not scored over 28 points in SEC games. Only one game with 330-plus uh, yards out of seven played. Yeah, and that was Kentucky, a, ga a game you expect to dominate. Against the upper-tier defenses, Florida offense has uh, not come through this year. Second and 14, 12 to go. South Carolina with three down. Looks like they might bring five. They'll bring four. Leak from the backside finds Dallas Baker to the 2019. It'll be third and long. Well, third and mid range. Baker with a catch. When you don't pressure Chris Leak and play that soft zone, you got a seven man zone back there. I mean, uh, Chris Leak is tough to stop. How big is this now, Gary? You've got a field goal kicker who already has missed from 29. Right, right. He's two for eight for, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't get it to see Florida go for it. Well, Third and five at the 19. And the Gators trail by three. Quick flip, left side. It's a moot point. Andre Caldwell picks up the first down. Well, Dan, when you just line up right here, the Gamecocks just gave you the look that we're playing man-to-man, -man, just man-to-man. -man. One, two, three. You just run the bubble screen to the outside. Caldwell shows them the number, the number five. It's a nice technique by Caldwell. You turn, give the quarterback a nice target, go upfield for a first down. And so a first down at the 13-yard line. 11.25 to go. Yards after the catch, Florida 108. Halfback pass, no. Caldwell throws it away. Very intentional grabbing. Yeah, sure it is. Tried to get too cute. Florida, again, tried to just gimmick their way to a touchdown. And it cost them. Throwback pass to the quarterback on first down. Intentional grounding. Number five on the defense. Five yard penalty from the spot of the foul and loss of down. From the spot of the foul, significant. Uh, did it sound like I didn't like the play call? <laughs> I've, I've seen well. The Gators just might expire if self-inflicted wounds. Holy cow. No one's covered Dallas Baker yet. Chris Leak is 17 for 23, and you're going to let Caldwell try to steal a cheap touchdown. Sounds like you were not enamored of that one. Well, I might have got benched on that one. I wouldn't have called that one in the auto. Second down across the middle. There you go. Crossing route. There you go. Harvin. To the 10. They're just short of the first down. Percy Harvin, and he gets up limping. Yep, that, that high ankle sprain that's bothered him all year. He kind of got that Roy Williams tackle from behind. Okay? This is so simple. They've been giving you this crossover all day. We've seen about five of these to Harvin. And watch, comes across. Brinkley can't get him. Harvin goes upstairs, and then Brinkley does from behind. And that's when those things hurt you. And guess who's in, Vern? Third and two officially, Tim Tebow from the shotgun. Latsko goes left. Tebow goes left, pulls up. Option play, Latsko can't get it. It's fourth down. Now what do you do? Well, I would kick a field goal. I would, I'm just going to say, you got to tie the football game here. You can't take the chance. Chris got, Hetland has missed from 29. He's little, coming on the field. Excuse me, Vern. Got a little, little, try to trick them again. Try to trick for the Latsko touchdown instead of going for it. You've got to depend on your kicker. It's his job. 22 yards. He's made two this year. One from 22, one from 29. Chris Hetland. Red shirt senior from Leesburg. 
Now that crowd in the south end zone agrees with the decision. <laughs> there were murmured boos as Hetland came on the field, but he has knocked it home, and we're tied at 10. Here's some weight. Let me lift it off my shoulders. Yes. Ten ten ball game, ten forty nine to go. Don't forget later in the game, the five star play of the game presented by Wrangler. Well, Chris Hetland from twenty two yards out. We're tied. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little different look than yes. we saw from him in the first quarter. Well, you first said half. it exactly right. Way to the world. You got the police officer yes. batting you on the back. Uh, that, was, that augurs well for the remainder of the year. Yeah, evening. and I think it was also good the type of kick it was. You know, you may need him later for a game-winning kick. Give him one to get his confidence going, uh, and I think that was the one he needed. Eric Wilbur, the punter, alongside, and Joey Eos is getting set to kick off. Number 98. Remember a year ago, South Carolina was winning all these close games. Will this be the night? They haven't been winning them this year. No, no, no. Lost to Tennessee by seven. Lost to Arkansas. Auburn, six and seven. Touchback. Red Lobster's scholar athlete today is South Carolina's Leonard Stafford. He's been a Dean List student at South Carolina all four semesters. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown tonight by donating $1,000 to South Carolina's General Scholarship Fund. His nickname is Short and Round. Short and Round. Yep. Played a, tried out as a walk-on for this football team as a defensive tackle. And he's 5'8". Yeah. Defensive tackle, walk-on, now he's the fullback. Engineering student, first and ten. Sidney Rice in motion, followed by Smith. They fake the reverse and hand it off to Mike Davis, who gets uh, about a yard. Well, we've uh, South Carolina comes in with back-to-back -back losses at home. Tennessee and Arkansas. Here's uh, the way things have happened for them at Auburn earlier in the season. They wind up losing 17-24, had a chance to tie or take the lead. Tennessee, 31-24, and then last week, Great comeback, engineered by Blake Mitchell, but uh, threw an interception with five minutes to go in the game. Inside, Rice. Yeah, yeah, that's where you got to go. I'm surprised he didn't go with him that time. Remember the third down play when he threw to West inside? That's where I would have gone with the football. Florida's defensive backs do not feel confident covering Rice. They know they can be deep. Ryan Smith, oh, you know, Utah, we didn't play with any guys against guys like that. No. No, no guys like that for in, on Utah's schedule. Had that five touchdown game against Florida Atlantic that uh, Gary mentioned earlier. He's only got two other touchdowns this season, so a total of seven. One last week. By the way, Brandon Spikes has been in the game the whole time at linebacker. Play action for Mitchell, back with a lot of time, goes deep, he's got McKinley open, perfect pass, and McKinley's out of bounds with a first down at the 30-yard line. What a beauty. He had seven catches last week against Arkansas. This time he's going to come right across. The, remember that crackback block? Same look, only this time it's a play action pass. Look at this throw. Vern called it perfect, like handing off the baton on a race. That's how perfect that was. Kenny McKinley, father Ken, a bank manager in the greater Atlanta area, successfully fought off colon cancer a year ago and is here watching this game. McKinley goes wide right. Davis. High low at the 23-yard line. Aggressive, aggressive run. Second down, Mitchell back. Left side, oh, wide open is McKinley. That had to be a blown coverage. You know, when you got a system you believe in, and you're calling plays. Now, Steve Spur, he told me that if a quarterback came from Florida, you know, Danny Warfel came, 
he could still run the offense that I'm running right now. Same terminology. This is so simple right here. Had to be a busted coverage and well read. And again, Blake Mitchell puts it right where he had to, right on the face mask. <laughs> yeah. He just has so much confidence in his plays. It's just like reaching in for that old putter in your bag. He's had it 25 years. He feels comfortable with it. First and 10. Davis to the corner, touchdown, South Carolina. That's the best called drive I've seen in 10 years in college football. Really? That was perfect. Every play call had a plan, executed. They knew exactly what they wanted to do, and he got it in for seven points. The touchdown comes on Mike Davis's 17th carry of the ball game. It comes from 14 yards out. And South Carolina responds with the tie-breaking touchdown. Suck up on. Blocked! This can be returned. Pointer. Reggie Nelson is tackled. But, whoa, filed that one away. Jarvis Moss, number 94, made the block. You remember those losses against Auburn, Tennessee, and Arkansas. Each game was decided or helped be decided by a special teams play. Remember the onside kick by Auburn, half knees punt return, and the punt block for a safety. Now this makes it a six-point game. Whoa, inside. Big number 94, Jarvis Moss. Uh-oh. Take a look at the touchdown, though. Mike Davis from 14. Extra point blocked it 16 10. And now it's time for our Geico scoring recap. Take you back early in the ball game. Mike Davis, a four yard touchdown run. As Dustin Doe missed a tackle that uh, made it 7 0. Dallas Baker took one away, got into the end zone. We were tied at seven at the break. Ryan Sucka from 47 yards out broke the tie 10 7. And then at the other end, it was Chris Hetland who had missed from 29. Cans this one from 22 to tie at 10-10. But then an 80-yard drive that was finished off by Mike Davis's nice run toward the corner. Gets by Ryan Smith and scored. The extra point was blocked. And so we are at 16-10. to 10. What a well-executed play against one of the best defenses in college football. Florida's turn. That's the 11th block kick. They uh, blocked a field goal earlier, and now an extra point. Special teams. Suck it. Perfect kick. Yes. And so with 8.07 to go. First and 10. Gators from the 20. Menacing looking thing in the end zone. Each time they've had the ball, they've gotten into South Carolina territory, have the Gators. On first down, they flip it out left side. Harvin incomplete. And a second down and 10. Leak from the gun. And off to win. Goes left. He's averaging over eight yards per carry, and he picks up five on that one. Well, the BCS standings will uh, get a shake up because the big one is that third one, Louisville. Yep. They kind of get erased here, don't they? And uh, then one below Texas, number right six. Right here, they're kind of going to go. Uh, okay, California. And, and, and we don't know about this one, and yeah. California's in a little trouble, too. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Texas still has the Aggies left. Okay, third and five. Three men down for South Carolina. Leak has it. Hit, escapes the tackle, he'll run. And he's going to be caught short. When they close on Chris Leak, you could tell he pulled it down. It was an eight-man drop that time. South Carolina dropped into a zone. Chris had nowhere to throw the ball, wanted to go, had to go out to the outside, and then he knew about halfway through this run, 
he wasn't going to make it. And instead of laying out on a huge play, kind of backed away from that play. On, and on fourth down, ooh, look who trots on the field. Tebow is in fourth and one. This has not been a successful gambit for Florida this year. They're only two for nine on fourth down. Bet they don't pass this one. I'll bet you're right. Fourth and one from the 29. Tebow. Got it. He's like a train on that play. Or at least the locomotive. Well, he was on that one. Ted, that was a big hit by Woodson, number 36. I mean, this is a this is a collision. I mean, you talk about two guys well blocked. Oh. Got a hand at the Stony Woods in there. There was no getting out of the way of that train. The conversion is made. Tebow with a little enthusiastic response. And it's first and ten. 540 to go. Flag down. 11 third and four down, fourth down rushes, seven first downs. But of course, uh, doesn't take into account kneel downs. Well, it'll be his team next year. Yep. Sideline warning, South Carolina. That's their first sideline warning. Well, Steve Spurrier is yelling at the get back yeah. coach. Yeah, it wasn't me. There are a thousand stories in college football and the NFL. The get back, coach. get back, coach. <laughs> right now, with uh, you know, a little over five and a half minutes to play here, you're, you're looking at uh, this might be the last time you get the ball if you're Florida. Leak, crossing pattern. Oh, it's Harvin. Tackle from behind. Great speed. I mean, somewhere in the vicinity of 4.25, 4.3 for the 40. Track champion in high school, basketball player, but limping again, yeah. that high ankle sprain. This is about the sixth catch. Of the, it is the sixth catch of the game for Harvin. At least five of them have been on that pass right over the middle. The over route right between the hashes. It seems to be conceded by South Carolina. Let Harvin have that throw, and Florida should be taking it more often. 5.31 to go as uh, the clock stops on the out-of-bounds play. Deshaun Wynn is back on the field. So is Billy Latsko, number 42. Wynn can't quite break the tackle. Yeah, but, you know, Vern, that's 6-7 yards right there. You know, the, he carried on that first down play before, 22 yards, and never got the ball again. Remember when the time when they kicked the field goal on that drive? I tell you, the guy's just good. Seems like a good running back to me. He might not be, you know, uh, the best. Yeah, Maybe he doesn't have the, right. the, the yeah. he doesn't go all the way with it like uh, Reggie Bush, but he makes first downs. 11 for 88. That ain't bad. Second down and three. 5:04 to go. Dallas Baker starts in motion, followed by Fred Bennett. Leak keeps it. How about this play? He had a 45-yarder against Alabama. This one not quite as far, but equally meaningful. Chris Lee. Boy, this is a great call right here. No one was expecting this. The belly keeper by Chris Lee. You can see he just ran right by a guy right there. Had no chance for it up front. Ryan Brown had it. Did not see it. He says, no way. Chris Lee's going to keep this thing upfield. Great call by Dan Mullen. That's a gain of 16 and a first down at the 23 with 434 to go. Here's Leak pulling it back. Going deep. Got a man in the end zone. Tipped away. Savell Newton. Savell Newton saw it. The quarterback read that crossing route. Same play that worked against Tennessee for a touchdown. This time, Savell Newton back there says, we got that play. And he followed Chris Leak's eyes. Ball hung a bit. Newton almost. Remember Steve said at halftime to Tracy, we got to make one of those plays. We got to catch. That was catchable by Newton. If he makes that play, that could be a winning play. Well, he was the starting quarterback last week against Arkansas. Benched at the half after a 7 of 19 performance. Handoff. They come right to Sean Wynn to the 20-yard line. 
It'll be third down and eight with 4.15 to go and a sense of urgency now on the sidelines and in the stands. It's going to be a real interesting strategy for Urban Meyer here. If you don't pick it up to make it real close on fourth down, two field goals tie it. What's he going to do? That's why he makes, what does he make, a couple million dollars? Yeah, here? I've heard that. Third and eight. Empty backfield for Leak. South Carolina, three men down. They're going to drop eight. And Leak on a quarterback draw up the middle. Spins for the 12, I think. Well, he had the belly read. Now he's got the quarterback draw. Now he didn't go all the way. I tell you, he almost got it. Cody Wells had a shot to save that play, and he got through to the to the to the first down marker and just got a lot cross. And on first down, it's Tim Tebow, the freshman, had the first down run on fourth and one, back at the 30. Again, three down for South Carolina. Tebow goes left to the five. Drama continues. Chris Hetland has missed two extra points this year. He's on to attempt to try for the lead. Perfect. Florida leads. His seventh play of the football game. First down, power O with your power back. This is just power. Oh, follow the guard, Drew Miller. Get into the end zone and step over a safety. Boy, did Florida answer that drive. That was pressure packed, and they did it. Gamecocks get the ball back. They have all three timeouts left. 90,000 plus on hand, most of them roaring now in approval as the Gators respond to South Carolina's touchdown with a blocked extra point and a superb drive with Tim Tebow scoring from 12 yards out. Remember when Les Miles made the call? Urban Meyer made the call on fourth on his own 29-yard line with Tebow. Big decision, and it came through. Joey Eos will kick off, number 98. Corey Boyd. And Mike West are the deep men for South Carolina. 17-16, and the Gamecocks have all three timeouts left. Short, returnable. Taken by Boyd at the nine. Breaks the tackle and is filled up at the 25-yard line. Big play provided by defensive end Jarvis Moss with the blocked extra point. Yeah, right there, number 94, just a little penetration, got up there, and that changed the whole kind of feel of this football game. Chris Leak, the quarterback draw on third down, and then, of course, Tebow comes in the football game on first down to score. But remember, the big play, I think, was going for it on fourth down. You got to give credit to Urban Meyer. He stood up there like the decision maker and made a good decision. Here's Mitchell back. Underneath pass is caught by Freddie Brown, number 82, and that uh, moves it all. Tebow, as expected, with the fourth down play back at the 30-yard line. Yeah, this is it. This could be the football game. Nice fit by Billy Latsko, number 42 that time. Came around the corner and sealed off the linebacker. Second and one. Mitchell, nobody open. Comes now, somebody's open. Wow. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like that two-man rush. I, I listen, they got a big field goal kicker for South Carolina. Two-man rush, that's too long. 
That quiets the crowd. Yeah. Suck up can hit it from 50 yards, two-man rush all the time in the world. You just can't play zone that long, can't hold on to men that long, and, and Mike West does a nice job of getting underneath that and making the play. I'm sorry, that was Mike Davis. It was. Matt, Mike, you got it. Ryan Suckup has one from 55 yards out this season. First down. Quick flip, right side, good block on the corner. The catch is made by Mo Brown, number nine. Yeah, it was Kenny McKinley with that good block. That ball was thrown about 35 yards in the air that time, and uh, McKinley kind of freed it up. Second and six. Well, you sure get your money's worth in this league, don't you? <laughs> Holy cow. 68 seconds to go. Davis is the running back. Two men wide to the near side, and two are wide right. Mitchell back. Pumps, hit as he lets it go. One on one, deep intercepted. It was a, a flutter ball. And Tremaine McCollum, number 18, had a shot at the interception. Yeah. Uh... Jarvis Moss and Derek Harvey, number 94 and 91, I think were the guys that met at the quarterback right there. Yep, that's exactly right what happens. And that was fortunate. That could have gone to anybody. Third down. They need six. Again, same formation. Florida will blitz. Mitchell got it. At the 31 yard line, Freddie Brown. What kind of pass was that? Hook pass? Yes. Little button hook. Go down 12 yards, button hook. I'll tell you, it's the first thing when you're playing in the streets is come down here, the old button hook. Nothing like that ball. See how the receiver could move to an inaccurate throw? Yeah, got no visor. That's all I can do. Yeah. Tense up. Three timeouts left. 35 seconds to go. They hand it off to position the ball at the 35-yard line. If they don't gain it down, it'll be a 52-yarder. They lost two on that one. Suck up twice this season. Once from 55, once from 50. This afternoon, he's hit from 47. And he is probably going to have a chance as South Carolina takes its first time out. Ryan Suckup. 11-13 from field goal range coming into the ball game. Had a blocked field goal earlier in this one. That was from 47 yards out. He made one from 47, but here's the difference in the ball game right now. The blocked extra point. It's second down and 12. Corey Boyd in the backfield with Blake Mitchell. South Carolina, two timeouts remaining. One-on-one on, one on Sidney Rice to the top of the screen. Right up there. One-on-one, on one, your best guy. Can't ask for anything more than that. Mitchell lets it go. Flag is down before. Oh, my. And there's another flag there. So we have two flags on this play, I, but the one may be a pre-snap. It's exactly right. And they went for the slant and go. Spurrier went for it all, and he had it all down to the seven-yard line. Oh, oh, a self-inflicted wound on a touchdown type play. Before the snap, false start, number 77 on the offense. Five yards penalty. He second down. Yeah, that's... Meredith, the left tackle. Right here, can you see it? There oh, yeah. it is. There yep. it is. Yep. Yep. So second and 17 with 22 seconds to go. And now out of field goal range. I mean, it might be, but it'd be a long one. Florida rushes four. Right side, incomplete. Third down. Boy, on that little movement on Meredith, South Carolina had the guy. 
on the coverage and the play exactly the way they wanted it. And now they need about uh, eight, eight, ten yards to make it a, a good try. I would think. Again, Suckup's long for the year is 55. It's third and 17 with 18 seconds to go. South Carolina has timeouts left. Mitchell, quick setup inside. Freddie Brown at the 31-yard line. They'll run it all the way down, won't they? This will make it about a 48-yarder. The slant that was so good to him against Arkansas is exactly what he came back to. Ryan Suckham, a 6'3 sophomore from Hickory, North Carolina, will get his chance when we come back. Ryan Suckup, 7 of 11 in excess of 40. This one from 48. For the lead. Remember, Meyer has never lost at home, and South Carolina has never won in the swamp. Nothing you can do as a coach now. As they say, the haze in the barn. Scott Morgan, Ike Crowfoot, most significantly, Ryan Suckup involved for South Carolina on this play. It is blocked! Moss again! Jarvis Moss! Again! Urban Meyer has still not lost in the swamp. South Carolina still has not won in the swamp. And Florida's dreams of a berth in the BCS title game remain alive by a very slim margin. How about the margin of a six foot six defensive end who blocked an extra point and field goal, Jarvis Moss. The margin of those fingers. Let's go down to Tracy with Urban Meyer. Coach, special teams, special teams, special teams. How did you guys pull this one out? That well, was a great win against our very talented team, very well coached team. And we got something going here in the swamp. We got to keep it going. Talk about that final go-ahead touchdown drive. Yeah, I thought Chris really did a nice job. Then we operated a little bit more out of the spread sets. That was a little bit more of the spread offense. And then Tim Tebow, you know, what can you say about it? He's, he's as good a runner as I've been around. Does this team deserve to be talked about in the national championship well, we race? get ready and keep getting a little better. But, uh, of course, we do. Thanks a lot, Coach. Back to you guys. Jarvis Moss from Denton, Texas. Two blocks today. An extra point. Look at that. Six foot six. His left hand, his ring finger. Might that be the ring finger that keeps alive a national championship prayer? On the sideline, Urban Meyer tried to downplay the significance of this matchup with Steve Spurrier. Don't you believe it didn't matter? And how about Jarvis Moss? Missed a season because of a pelvic infection. It was the Urban Meyer staff that went the extra mile to find out exactly what was wrong and what a contribution he's made.